What's up guys, Shane Stars here. I've been using my Galaxy Watch 3 for the past couple of days. It was my replacement for my Active Watch 2 and I'm really loving this leather strap and also this rotating bezel. It just makes navigating the watch so much easier and so much more accurate. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys tons of tips on the Galaxy Watch 3 so that you can get the best possible experience out of your new watch. Let's go ahead and get started. This video is sponsored by Famasafe. The internet is a tool that allows us to access anything at all times, but it can be a dangerous place for kids. Predators exist in social media apps, and there's all kinds of content that your kids may not be ready for just yet. You should never allow your kids on the internet without some sort of parental control app like Famasafe. Just download it on the Play Store and install it on your phone and your child's phone. You'll be able to see exactly where your kid's phone is in real time, and you'll be able to see a list of actual activity. You're even able to block out and filter any kind of content that your kids should not be able to access. If you jump into the YouTube app control, this will actually show you your kids watch history. You're even able to block certain videos or channels. If your kids try to access something that you've blocked, you're going to be notified. Protect your family with Famasafe today. So by default to wake up the watch, you're going to turn the bezel. You may decide that you want to tap the screen to wake up the watch. To do that, you go into your settings, scroll down into advanced, scroll down into screen wake up, scroll to touch wake up, and make sure to turn that on. Now when you want to wake up the watch, you can just touch it, and then now you're able to interact with the screen. One thing I loved about my Galaxy Active Watch 2 was the always on display. No matter what I was doing, I could always glance down at my watch without having to touch it or wake it up and be able to see what the time was, what the date was, and see whether or not I had notifications. That setting, of course, is turned off by default. In order to turn that on, you're gonna jump into your settings, go to watch faces, and turn watch always on. Go ahead and turn that on. This is definitely one to lower your battery life. So for me, I had this turned on all day long with auto brightness also turned on. Right now it is eight in the evening. I took this off the charger at about 6.30, and I still have more than 50% battery life left. So you still should be able to get at least 24 hours and then, you know, at least all the way into the evening of the next day, even with always on display turned on and auto brightness turned on. Of course, you can change some of the battery settings to get even more battery life, but just know that the always on display does take up some of your battery life. So speaking of battery life, you do have several options for battery life. If we go into our settings and then scroll down to battery, you have a few modes. You have the standard mode, and it says that I've got you know 20 hours and 24 minutes left, so I, I'm almost gonna get that second full day, not quite. Then there's the power savings mode. Uh, this is going to do certain things. So this turns off everything but calls, messages, and notifications, and this is going to get you more than three hours of battery life, and then we have the watch only mode. So if you go camping or something, and you're not going to be around, a wireless charger or some kind of power supply, you may want to consider the watch only mode. It says it will get you 21 days without a charge, which is pretty incredible. Uh, once you enable this, you would press the power key to show the time. So you're only really going to get your time. You're not going to get notifications and things like that. And then to go back into the full watch mode, uh, you would press and hold the power button to go back into the standard power mode. Another quick way to get some extra juice out of your battery is the grayscale mode. I have mine set up to enable with three double presses. The way we're gonna set that up is we're gonna go into our settings, scroll down to advanced, go down into accessibility, go to advanced settings, go to two finger triple tap, turn that on, and then below that, below that you have the two finger triple tap settings here and one of those is the gray skill, and there's even negative colors there. And then three taps gives you your color back. So the next one here is pretty nifty. You can actually make your watch a trackpad. So we're gonna go into our apps, and then we're gonna scroll all the way over to PPT controller. So this is actually PowerPoint controller. We'll go ahead and turn that on. We'll go ahead and connect to the OnePlus 8 Pro. All right, and then we will make a touchpad out of our watch. So now, you guys can see the cursor on my watch. This would be great for presentations here. Uh, if you were sharing your phone screen with a projector or something, you can actually use the cursor here 
to do things on your phone. You could even use this to take pictures with your camera application yeah, like that, which is pretty nifty as well. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you do enable all notifications so that you don't miss anything that's coming through to your Galaxy Watch 3. So to do that, we're gonna jump into our Galaxy wearable application. We'll go into our notifications. We'll go to see all notifications and just make sure that everything here is turned on. That way you're not gonna miss anything. If notifications come in from Gmail, Twitter, WhatsApp, all of those are compatible with your Galaxy Watch 3. And as long as you have everything turned on, you're not gonna miss any of your notifications. All right, so if you have your notifications enabled, of course, you'll be able to actually access those text messages or those Twitter DMs. And then there are some quick replies here that auto-populate just depending on what was said in that particular message. And then if you click on the microphone here, you can actually speak your reply. So if we click on the mic here, all right, thanks, I appreciate that. I'll check it out when I get home. All right, and then we'll send. And so that sent an email and replying to messages is that easy. Custom watch faces are pretty simple here. We're gonna go into the Galaxy wearable app. We'll go down here to watch faces. And to change the watch face, you're just gonna click on the watch face and it's going to instantly change it over on your Galaxy watch. Now some of these have some extra customization features. So we go back to the one that I had before. You can go to this little customize option here. You have several different colors that are pre-made for this particular watch face. To change that, I would just click save and then it'll show up on the actual watch. If I go back into customize, I can choose my own color. So I can choose my own color here. So around the watch face here are my complications. I can change these to anything that I want here. I can change it to heart rate. So I've got heart rate and heart rate. I can go back to my steps. I can change it to my sleep pattern, my stress levels. Anything that I wanna monitor with my Galaxy Watch 3, I can change there. This one has five different complications, so you can change those uh, to anything that you want. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save my customized watch face, and that's gonna show up right there on the watch screen. There's so many to choose from. There's literally hundreds of watch faces. If you click on this Discover, it's going to give you even more watch faces here uh, that you can choose from. You can actually wirelessly charge your Galaxy Watch 3 with your Samsung phone. If I slide down my notifications here, I can turn on wireless power share. It says it's ready to charge. Put the center of your phone back to back with another device. We'll go ahead and put the watch on the back of the phone in the center here. All right, and now it is wirelessly charging. I did notice though, that when I try to do the same on my OnePlus 8 Pro, so if I turn on my OnePlus 8 Pro, and I turn on my power share. So I've got the reverse charge turned on the OnePlus 8 Pro. I've noticed that it doesn't really work well with the Galaxy Watch, so it probably only works with Samsung phones. Another really cool feature is the Find My Phone feature. So if we jump into our applications here and we scroll over to Find My Phone, we'll go ahead and choose that. And if I've lost my phone somewhere and I can't find it, I can actually just turn on the find my phone. It's going to give me a notification and a ring so that I can find and locate that phone. So what's really cool is that you can do this in reverse. If you've lost your watch, misplaced your watch, but you have your phone, you can go into the Galaxy wearable app and scroll down to find my watch and click start. And that's going to go ahead and give you that sound on your watch so that you can locate your watch. So you also have an option here to get location. So if you can't hear it, you still can't find it. Maybe you've misplaced it away from home. You can hit get location. It's gonna give you a map pinpointing the exact location of where you misplaced or where you left your watch. And then you can also set security here. You can lock the watch, reset the watch, or uh, reactivate the lock. That way, if you have misplaced it, other people won't be able to get your private information from your watch. So the Galaxy Watch 3 does include fall detection and SOS alerts. To enable those, we're gonna go back into our Galaxy wearables application. We'll go into SOS here. You can turn on 
the fall detection. So it says it'll make an SOS call and send SOS message to your emergency contacts when your watch detects a hard fall and you haven't responded for 60 seconds. So if you do fall, you're gonna get a notification over here. If you don't respond, it's gonna automatically notify your emergency contacts. It does also make it very clear that you need to keep an eye on your watch during high impact activities like sports, since that can sometimes register as a fall. Of course, you wouldn't want somebody being called and alerted uh, while you're playing some kind of sport or activity and you're not paying attention to your watch. Maybe if you're going to be exercising, just turn this feature off while exercising. That way you don't accidentally call someone. And then of course you can turn on this in SOS. If you do that to make that SOS call, you're just gonna triple tap the home button. That way, you know, it's gonna be very difficult to do that on accident. But if you get into a sticky situation, you need some help and you're not able to shout out for help or access your phone to make the call, uh, you can just triple tap very easily and make that SOS emergency call. If you ever needed to take a screenshot of your watch's screen, just press and hold. I just press and hold both buttons here and that's going to take a screenshot. That's gonna go directly to the gallery on your phone and then you can access it and edit it from there. So another cool thing that you have here is ongoing shortcuts. So any of these buttons here, you can actually activate those particular apps. So say I wanted to go to the weather app here, I can click on that ongoing shortcut and that's gonna open up my weather application. If I wanted to see my step counter, that's going to launch that application for me so I can get more information on my steps. These are not just to look at, you can actually um, activate those by pressing them and get more information. So another cool little feature, if you happen to be using the Play Music app to play uh, songs or playlists, you can actually click on the little application at the bottom here and then swipe up and this is going to give you access to that playlist and all the songs so that you can quickly and easily change your songs without having to pull the phone out of your pocket. So that's just a cool little feature. I don't think that this actually works on the YouTube music application. Hopefully it will soon because I actually find myself using the YouTube music application a whole lot more than the play music application. I don't think it, I also don't think it works for Amazon music. I may work for Spotify, I haven't tested that yet. So if you happen to be casting YouTube onto your screen, you can actually control that from your watch as well. Uh, so you can pause and play that. You can control the audio here. And if you're watching just a YouTube video, you can also fast forward and rewind right from your watch face, which is pretty neat. You don't have to take your phone out of your pocket while you're casting YouTube to your TV. So not everyone is a fan of the rotating bezel view on the applications. You can actually get a list view of your applications the easy way to do that is just to go into your settings, go into your apps, go into layout and choose list view. Now, whenever you go to your apps, you're going to have a list view. You'll have your recents up top and then you'll have them in alphabetical order below that. So another thing that can be frustrating is whenever you launch an application, when you allow your watch to go to sleep for 20 seconds, it's gonna make that application disappear and you're just going to have your watch face. So whenever you wake up the watch, it's going to go back to your watch face. If you want it to actually stay on that particular application, you'll just go into your settings, go into display, go into show last app and turn that on for one hour. Now there's, it doesn't allow you to actually turn on the last app for more than an hour. Hopefully one hour will be enough time for that to not be an annoyance uh, whenever you leave an app and then wake up your watch to see that it's not there anymore. So we'll go back into our apps and we'll launch the Galaxy Store here. Now whenever I let it fall asleep, when I wake it back up, it's going to go right back into that application that I had on there before. All right guys, that about wraps it up for this video. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more content on the Galaxy Watch 3. There's plenty more tips that I can put together for you guys if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, the next video may be a hidden tips video, uh, so be on the lookout for that. Thanks guys for watching, be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.